Yes, welcome along to Up in the Ante in association with Bet365 with David Jennings and Gavin Lynch counting down to the 2020 Cheltenham Festival. And would you believe we're on to week four and what a cracking week it's been on the racing front. Gavin, how was it for you? Uh, grand punting wise, uh, one something small of the week, last two days, one three days, my high and low point came within five minutes of each other. I got a few quid up with uh, Skeptical Win at Dundalk on Wednesday and I checked my phone, I did WhatsApp. I got a lovely message to say that Gypsy Island was out of Cheltenham, so I went from a high to a low within five minutes. And but um, A lot of up in the anti viewers yeah. were with you. They were devastated. I backed it last Monday or Tuesday, and then we got the news on Wednesday, so that was a bit sickening. Uh, but That's what, what you call a bad run for your money. Yeah, didn't get much of a run there. But uh, what a weekend it was with the two races in Haydock and, and uh, Ascot. Two fantastic races. Anybody who thinks the flat racing is better than National Hunt is dreaming. They are dreaming, because we're jumps boys, me and Gavin. Yeah. And we're going to come to them performances later in the show. So as always, we're going to kick off with our questions from the crowd where you, the viewer, get to interact with myself and Gavin. And the first question this week comes from Joe Holden. And Joe wants to know about presenting Percy, Gavin. Yes. He wants to know, where do we think presenting Percy is going to go? And should we be giving up on him? I wouldn't give up on him yet. Um, there's talk that he might go for the John Dork on two and a half and they may be around Christmas. Um, I'd say he'll definitely end up in a Gold Cup. Philip Reynolds might never have a Gold Cup horse again. But just, I wouldn't back him in the part, first couple of runs back. Uh, Pat Kelly is a fantastic man at targeting a particular race in Cheltenham. And I'd, say, I'd leave him alone uh, until March maybe and see how he's been running. In the so meantime. you haven't totally given up? I wouldn't, but I definitely wouldn't back him the first run or second run, no. And we do think for Joe that he will end up in the Gold Cup. I do. Yeah. I agree. I would advise yet not to give up on presenting Percy. I still think he's top notch. You say he picked up a small injury in the Gold Cup, so we'll have to see. We will have to see. And the next question comes in from Dominic Spiller. And Dominic wants to know is, what do you boys think of Envoy Allen going down the champion hurdle route? He looks exceptional and I really like Abracadabras for the Supreme. I don't see them both running against each other. So Envoy Allen, is there any chance that Gordon could be audacious and send him into the champion I hurdle. don't think there's any chance. Whatsoever? I don't because... Uh, Give me a price number on the champion hurdle. Uh, whatever, 50 to 1. But I think that um, I'll because of what happened... I'll have a euro with you. Have it, you have a bet. Uh, you have to pay it on though. Um, what happened, Sam Crow Garden targeted Sam Crow at the champion hurdle. I'd say he's learned his lesson. I'd say he regrets that. So I don't think he's going to do that again. And in terms of avoiding each other, Envoy Allen is a different owner to Abercadabras. Uh, Gigginstown also owned like Midnight Run, who's probably going with the Ballymore. So he, Abercadabras, might go up to the Supreme. The um, Fury Road for the Bartlett. Uh, JP has a few horses for the Supreme. He also has uh, Andy Dufresne. So with all the different owners, I think um, Envoy Allen probably end up maybe in a Ballymore. Okay. 50 to 1 with Gavin Lynch that yeah. Envoy Allen goes for the champion hurdle. There you go, Dominic. 50 to 1 Envoy Allen to go for the champion hurdle. Our next question is from our old friend Basher Watts. Oh, yeah. What a name. Come yeah. on, Basher. Basha wants to know is how forgiving should we be of horses that disappointed at previous Cheltenham festivals? Epitant being uh, my head scratcher in this case, do I forget about her poor run at the Cheltenham festival and keep the faith? Can I take this one? Yeah. Because uh, as you know, Gavin, I've forgiven you many a time. Yes. I am the forgiving type. Yep. My beautiful wife will vouch for that. Yep. I'm very forgiven. Um, and I think you should certainly forgive Epitant. He, she got her flu jab couple of weeks before the Shetland Festival. Okay. And Nikki said she was one of the ones he just wasn't 100% happy with going into the festival. Started 15 to 8 favour for the Mayor's Novice Hurdle. It was one of JP's bankers of the week. Travelled quite well, but just didn't quicken up on kind of on the uphill climb to the line. I think Epitant is still very good. And I'm going to tell you something else. Go on. Epitant is going to win on Saturday. Yeah, I was going to say she's entering Saturday in New She's yeah. entered in the Jerry Fielding, a race that Nikki Henderson has won three times in the last decade, including with Lammy Surge. Okay. The top class Lammy Surge. Off a mark of one three seven speaking to nicky and listening to his his views on okay. a stable tour he thinks epitant could still be very very good and he's extremely excited and i think off a mark of 137 in a race that he likes to win epitant basher is going to win the jerry field so do forgive epitant i have a little worry with the mayor's novice hurdle last year with eglatine de soy concertista tintangle black tears it was quite an ordinary race so that'll be a worry but yeah we'll Thanks, see you on man. saturday I just ruined my <laughs> no, no. there. Thanks. Okay, keep the faith, Basher. Epitant is still very good. And the final question is to Bernard McKay. And he says, I think Classical Dream needed the run at Punchdown in the Morgiana. He will be better next time. And I still think he's the one to beat in March. He's a spring horse, Gavin Lynch. This is what Bernard thinks. Yeah, um, he was back from 2-1 to one on into 2-5. to five, So I'd say he probably was fancy judging by the market. Um, he got a soft ground, which he has to have. 
his jumping was a bit sketchy, particularly at the first. The first he yeah. was, yeah, he, he ballooned. Very it. worked up before the start as well. And then he was also very free early on. He just would want to do a lot better the next day. He'd want to settle better, jump better, and he'd want to win his Leprechaun on Christmas. So if Saldi, Sharjah, Classical Dream all lighten up in the Ryanair hurdle at Leprechaun on Christmas, who does Gavin Lynch back? Maybe Saldi here, but no strong opinion. Yeah, I would. I'd, I'd be a Classical Dream fan. Would you? Yeah. He'd want yeah. soft ground now. He would want soft ground, but I think he's better than he showed at Punchestown. So now, folks, it's time for the week that was and what a week it has been. Gavin Lynch, you've been studying races, you've been taking notes the last seven days as a racing fan. It's been quite incredible. Yeah, I know. It's a fantastic weekend, more so say than during the week, but that's normal. Uh, we're going to start on Tuesday in Fairy House. Uh, quiet meeting enough. Uh, there's one horse that caught my eye was uh, unaccepted. Um, there's a few different spellings going around uh, for that one, but unaccepted. It beats, beat Jason the Militant and the very man uh, by four and a half lengths, and I thought it was a good performance. 20 to 1 there for the Supreme. Uh, Warwick on Wednesday, Torpillo, a four year old, beat one of your favourite horses, Mr. Fisher. It was a good run. Uh, he jumped very well. Getting weighed from Mr. Fisher? Yeah, he was, yeah, being the four year old. He won't get that in March, but uh, he's 25 to 1 for the Arca. But he's worth a mention. He's out of my top 10 favourite horses, Mr. Fisher. He's gone. He's gone. Yeah, he's not in the top 10 anymore. He's still a good horse. <laughs> He's just not a great horse. No. Um, on Thursday in Thurless, uh, Sonoria beat a uh, good time Tara by 12 lengths. Now, will she be good enough this year to maybe to win a JLT? Maybe not. Um, I think she's 25 for so that generally. One uh, interesting thing on Sonoria, I interviewed Henry de Bromhead at, at Ferriers after Honeysuckle won. I said, was there any temptation to send Honeysuckle over fences given the way she jumps hurdles? And he immediately said, sure, we've got Sonoria mm. over fences. So they obviously think of her in that bracket. Yeah, no, she's a good horse. Uh, she jumped very well and she won easy. Also, on Thursday and Thurless, uh, Footpad came back to himself. Um, Loved Matt, the way he jumped. Yeah, he, he jumped much better this time. Neat, tidy, accurate, professional. Yeah, he was not from three last year um, and his jumping wasn't brilliant last season. Uh, but this time he jumped very well. It was two miles six. There's talk that he may go to the King George, which has turned out already looks like being maybe the race of the season already so for something of a forgotten horse footpad as well yeah yeah no he he looked back to his best anyway uh friday nascot angels brett the gray did you see him beat the first flow i did uh they went and birchdale sold, yeah birchdale was birchdale. a long way back in third um first flow david bass threw him into every fence they went some lick birchdale was gone at halfway it seemed to me and uh angels breath who was rated 148 over hurls is now 12 to 1 i think for the jlt that's probably the most likely race he'll run in now you're not going to like this okay don't give up on Birchdale. You reckon? Yeah. If you remember, now I'm not saying he's in the same category. Deffy Desai was very disappointing on his chasing debut okay. at Cheltenham. Didn't jump particularly well. I liked Birchdale in the fact that the race was over for him a long way out. I liked the way he jumped at a faster pace than he needed to go. He needs a little bit further. Hmm. Don't be surprised if he leaves that run way behind. Yeah, he's, he's better than that. He'd want to show a lot more the next As day. As we know, I'm the forgiven type, Gavin. <laughs> Saturday in Haydock, uh, the first one to mention is the Banner King Rebel um, was second in the Grade 2 bumper in Aintree last April. It was only a length second to Mac Fabulous. It's now three from four over hurdles, uh, one by five lengths, and it's 20 to one to the Supreme. And uh, Next in Haydock, we're on to loss in translation, beating uh, Bristol Demai at his home ground. Um, to me, loss in translation was fantastic. Mm. Uh, Robbie even said afterwards that he got there too soon because... Interesting tactics, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, his jumping is just extraordinary. Um, he's so low and quick and slick at them and he gains a length or two at every fence. And do you like the way he kind of changed his jumping approach? So at Carlisle, he was so exuberant. He mm. was standing off his fences. He was taking off two or three st strides early before he should. Whereas at Haydock, it was different. It was just, it was quick. It was tidy. It was, he wasn't losing any ground. He wasn't asked for any exuberant leaps. He just got the job done. I liked it. I'd prefer the jump on, uh, on Saturday because it's conserving so I, energy. Yes. This thing of wing and fences has to be taking energy out of a horse, whereas on Saturday it looked like it was only popping It's like away. a goalkeeper making a save for the cameras. Yeah. You know the way they palm it around yeah. the post? You want to see them catching it. <laughs> That's what he does. It's not for the cameras. He was professional. But he's on now, I think, to the King George, trying to chase the £1 million bonus that uh, the Tizzards came close to winning with cue card back in 2016. So they probably feel like they're old one. Right now, is he the horse to beat in the King George? Yeah, with surname, I don't know, but uh, certainly he's the horse to beat for the Gold Cup anyway. Uh, also, then on to Saturday in Ascot, Valtor won a 2 mile 5. Novice Hurl used to be a chaser, he's 21 for the Barclay. Uh, surname and Altior, what did you make of that? Well, <sighs> first firstly, of all, go on, go, you go. can I go firstly? Yep. Firstly, this, this whole theory that, oh, sure, he didn't stay is 
Oh, he stayed, yeah? Yeah, he stayed. He mm -hmm. definitely stayed. He was lethargic. I thought mm -hmm. effort was an effort. Even jumping, it looked like he was struggling to get out of the ground. And it just was real laboured. To me, immediately after the race, if you didn't know those two horses, right? You were watching them for the first time and you were trying to make an observation after the race. My initial observation, if I didn't know Altior had won two Queen Mothers, one a Supreme, one an Arkel, I would have said, that horse needs further. Yeah. Because it was looked like surname actually outpaced him. So... I wouldn't be giving up on him for the King George for all that I was Just didn't really look like the real Altior, sure doesn't No. And last season, you'd have to say Altior didn't look his best either. He only wins the champion chase by just over a length. So now, I, I put wonder... my neck on the line before the race saying Altior was basically an absolute certainty. I was left with egg on my face, but he's better than that. I thought Altior would win. I fancied him. Obviously, he was odds on favour, but uh, the handicapper was right. We all doubted that surname was a 176 and he was 175, but the handicapper is right for respect. now. He's right yeah. for now. He could but be wrong going forward. I just couldn't have Altio for a Queen Mother Champion chase at two or three to one. No. Uh, I just couldn't have that. And surname? The real yeah, sure. deal? You know, Best he's, horse in training? Uh, probably right-handed, obviously. Uh, he's not going to win at Cheltenham, uh, which this show is about, but yeah, he's a class act, yeah. Uh, the, the King George will be some race, we said. Uh, if the cap fits, um, beat Call Me Lord, Call Me Lord rather, giving it six pounds. He's eight to one to the stairs. It was an okay performance. I wouldn't be getting too scared of your Paisley Parks connections, to be honest. Uh, Capeland won a handicap uh, by 12 lengths. Bold it up. The two of them, remember the... Deja vu, yeah. Yeah. All over again, said Rodney. Um, he won off 143. He might get, say, 10 for that, 153. Uh, last year's top weight in the Grand Annual was 153, so he could end up in that race. Uh, Saturday in Gorham Park, uh, Franco de Port won a novice hurdle, but when is a novice not a novice? First of December. Yeah, so... He's only a novice for the next little while, so don't back him for the Supreme because he's not qualified. You get an he... even worse run for your money than Gypsy Island. Yeah, he um, he won a hurdle race in Otay last March, so he's not qualified. Get aboard won well a length and a half from Paloma Blue, one of your horses. Yeah, I, I, I was a bit disappointed yeah. by Get aboard. But again, he can't go left-handed, so forget him for Cheltenham. I think he needs to make the run as well. Maybe. Um, Lorena was very impressive in beating, in beating Manella Indo uh, by eight lengths over two and a half mile. They crawled early on and then it turned into a sprint. They, they flew down the straight. Now, that wouldn't have suited Manella Indo. It wouldn't give up totally on that horse. But Lorena um, is 4 to 1 favourite with Bet365 for the Arkell. She jumped very well. The one thing I'd say is which race is going to go for is that the ground is always soft on the Tuesday. So I'd say Willie might run on the Tuesday in the Arkell rather than on the Thursday in the JLT. What do you think? Yeah, I think she's Arkell written all over. Because and I think Willie knows you need to stay that little bit further in the Arkell as well. So. Yeah, and he's always, she's a wordy favourite, let's be honest. She is. Yeah. And um, he said that she always needs soft ground, so I'd say the Tuesday race. And uh, on to Sunday in Navin, uh, just two horses to quickly mention. Fury Road won by 10 lengths at 1 to 25. He's still a 16 to 1 shot to bar. Love the way he jumps. Yeah, he's, he's a fine big horse, jumps. isn't he? Yeah. He'll definitely stay as well. Uh, big, bad, and beautiful won the mayor's bumper uh, under the amazing Jamie Codd. As good as Robbie Power is over fences, Jamie's just. He's different league, isn't he? He's brilliant. Um, so and she was very impressive. Do not back big, bad and beautiful for the champion bumper. Please don't stop. If you're going to, don't. She can't run. She's already ran five times and you can only have ran four times to qualify for the bumper at Chetlam. So she's going to be seen next probably in the Mayor's Bumper, the Grade 2 uh, at Leprosound yeah. during the Dublin Racing Festival. That's it. That's the week. That was the week that was. It's stat of the week time. Yes, every week Gavin Lynch previews a race at the Chetlam Festival where he dissects the stats and tries to find us an early winner. What have you got for us this week, Gavin? Uh, the Kim Muir. I said I'd uh, try and look through that race for you. In uh, November. The Kim Muir in November. Yeah. Gavin, this is impressive already. Um, so there's four things I want to give you about the race. Uh, 11 of the last 12 winners were aged between 7 and 9, which is not an amazing stat. Uh, the one that I have in mind is 9 in January. Uh, the next one is 7 of the last 12 winners were in the top 3 in the betting. And if this lad shows up in the day, he will definitely be in the top 3 in the betting. Uh, 11 of the last 12 winners carry 11 stone or more. It's an odd to 145. So you have to, it's no problem carrying over 11 stone. Some of the handicaps are like that at Cheltenham. This lad will definitely be in the 140, so I think he'll just squeeze in. And uh, nine of the last 12 winners had, had at least one previous Cheltenham run, and he's ran at Cheltenham. The day he ran at Cheltenham was, uh, the name of the horse is Glenn Lowe. Oh. He, he ran at 137. He was beating a nose by Delta Work in the Pretemps in 2018. Not bad for him. Delta Work ran at 139 that day. He is now 13 higher over hurdles and is rated 162 over fences. So it was a brilliant run. And made a mistake at the last. It did. 
Uh, might not, well have won only perhaps. Uh, I had a good few quid in Glenlow that day, so anyway, we'll get over that. Um, well, it obviously had, happened. <laughs> it had two runs over fences in January, and then we didn't see it until recently, around 10 days ago. It finished fifth to Faheen. Uh, it was beaten 17 lengths. Uh, it jumped brilliant, jumped fine. It just got tired in the straight. Um, I'd imagine either Derek, who won the race for the same owner last year, or Jamie Codd, who also won it for Gordon and Cause Cause a few years ago. One of those two will ride it, and when one of those two ride in the amateur race at Cheltenham, it's a huge advantage. So. Derek was brilliant in any second day in the race last year. He was, yeah. yeah. So Glen Lowe, they won't bet on it yet, they won't bet in this race in February, but just keep an eye on him. Glen Lowe for the Kim Muir. That's Gavin Lynch's stat of the week. So up in the ante viewers, as you know, every week, myself and Gavin Lynch preview a big race at the Cheltenham Festival, and this week it's the turn of the stairs hurdle where Paisley Park is the defending champion. Yes, Paisley Park is currently Bet365's 2-1 favourite. Next in the market is Benny Dadu at 6-1. It is 7-1 about Lorena. 8-1 if the cap fits, who of course won at the weekend. 10-1 champ. 12-1 Manila Indo. 14-1 previous winner of the race, Penn Hill. And 14-1 also Super Sunday. It is 16-1 bar. So we have to start with the defending champion, Gavin. Paisley Park, a worthy yeah, favourite. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, he looks like in the same mould as Big Bucks who won four of them, Ingus Driever won three of them and Barracuda won two of them. Stays forever, comes off the bridle coming down the hill, looked in a spot of bother uh, when they turned in and then the next thing he just, it was one strike for there. Do you know what it just... reminds me of? It reminds me of you on a night out. Uh -huh. Do you know the way when you start drinking, you're in grey form, <laughs> yeah. and you're enthusiastic, then around 10 or 11 o'clock <laughs> you start getting tired and then we have to get you an old shot or something and just to perk you back up a bit. <laughs> and then you on. come alive when we get to the nightclub. The Duracell bunny. Yeah, so you're our Paisley Park. Yeah, I know he's a class act. Uh, he's only seven, turning eight in January. You can imagine he's going this weekend in Newbury and then the long walk, then the cleave and then the stairs. So. Does the flat spot worry you? Not really, because the other three I mentioned, Big Bucks, English Reaver and Barracuda, it seems sexy to have the flat spot because they all had it. Uh, Paisley Park has it, so it just means that they really stay. Okay, so it's a, it's a positive rather than a negative. Yeah, and also the other thing is there's only two hurdles in the last seven and a half furlongs um, on the Thursday, so that seems to suit him as well. He's a good jumper, but just it turns into a, such a, a staying race. Okay, so Benny Dadu is Bet365, six, six to one second favourite. Probably won't go for the race, no, no will he? No, 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 he'll go for the Mayor's Hurdle. Yeah. Willie loves the Mayor's Hurdle, so he's won it nearly every year. So. And would have won it last year. Yeah. Do you remember Benny's Dadu? No, I don't, I don't remember that, no. Fiona? No. Cost you a small fortune. <laughs> uh, next in the market is Lorena. I think she's not going to go, is no. she? No, no, definitely not. No, she'll go for the article of the JLT. And then we come on to if the cap fits. Who's a grand, grand horse? Lovely grand horse, horse. Nothing wrong with him. Just is he a stairs hurdle winner in waiting? No, you could see him finishing third or fourth, couldn't you? So but the cap kind of fits, just covers the ears, but just doesn't yeah, get the rest of the hair. Just to the side. Okay. Um, then oh, we're on to champ ten to one goes for the RSA, RSA favorite. Yeah, no. Doesn't run, so we're, we're struggling to find. Aye, all these Gavin. won't go to the stairs. No then chance. you've got twelve to one Manilindo, who's also going to go for yeah. the RSA. Yeah. Penn Hill is interesting. Yeah, he's actually eight turn of nine. Uh, he's um, two from two of the festival with the Bartlett and he won the stairs. Um, last year he didn't make it. The last time we seen him was when he was second to Fahey in, in Punchdown, April 18. But he never was as good after Cheltenham. He got beat before in Punchdown. So let's see. You reckon last week he said you're going to see more of him. Yes, I think uh, we are. This season compared to normal. But I don't see him in this weekend in fairness. No, it'll be interesting to see. Obviously, Benny Dadu goes in the Hatton's Grace. Uh, the horse I like at a biggish price. Okay, so we haven't mentioned one that you like, and we haven't mentioned one which okay. I like. So we've got two big price fancies for you. You go first. Okay, well, I go first. Yep. Mine is a huge price right down the bottom. 25 to 1 with Bet365. It is a horse called Sam's Profile, who's trained by Mouse Morris. Now, this is a horse that we haven't seen the best of yet. He's a big, raw, imposing individual. Hasn't yet filled out into his frame. I think he will this year. Don't forget Mouse Morris with Alpha de Zobo came up against the brilliant Tissel crack in the mm -hmm. stairs hurdle. The fact that he's waited a year to send Sam's profile over fences speaks volumes. And I think Sam's profile, 25 to 1, is a better horse than that price suggests. When you consider Manila Indo, Champ, Lorena, Benny Dadu, all these horses are much shorter price. They're not going to run in the race. Sam's profile, this is the only race he can potentially go for at the Cheltenham Festival. 25 to 1. We haven't seen him yet, but I think he'll be impressed when we see him. So Sam's profile for me. Um, the horse I like at a big price now I don't think it'll beat Paisley Park but if they ever at Christmas time they might start doing it without market if, if Paisley Park wins in the meantime uh, but I would give Bacardi's a chance uh, the last two seasons it went to the stairs after going over fences now don't forget as a novice hurdler it uh, won the delight over 2-2 and it also won the grade 1 and punched down over 2.5 so it definitely would have been placed in stairs hurdle two seasons ago yeah it fell at the last. last it would have maybe finished third Depends but that's on. coming from fences last year same thing again didn't like the fences then went to Cheltenham for the stairs and finished, I think it was sixth. 
Um, but this season, uh, it's already beaten Apples Jade and Avon by nine lengths. It's gone maybe this weekend again. Just if it ran three or four times, I could see that definitely being in the first three in the stairs. Excellent. So it's Bacardi's for Gavin and Sam's profile for me. Now we come on to what's happening this week. And like every week these days, Gavin, it's going to be a cracking week yeah, of cracker. racing. Uh, Labrooks Trophy, fighting fifth, bar one racing day with the Royal Bond, the Drimmore and the Hatton's Grace at Fairy House. It's a belter. Yeah, no, I'm hoping to go to Fairy House on Sunday, so it should be great. Um, Get the red carpet out for you. Yeah. Uh, you've got Champ on Friday, Paisley Park we mentioned on Friday, Saturday. Uh, so you're going to see the RSA winner on Friday. Enjoy Champ, because he's <laughs> going, just going to get shorter in the betting. Uh, then should the fight in fifth is all over, isn't it? Boo were there. How, like, do you know there's a horse entered in the fighting fifth that cannot even run? Do you know why? Because it's not rated high enough. It's rated 127. You have to be rated 130 to get into the race. Cool mix. Does that not scream how bad the race is? Yeah. These grade ones in England are so frustrating. You had four runners in the Betfair chase. You're going to have three or four runners in the fighting fifth hurdle. It's a disaster. Yeah. Should Booverdale will just win. But Booverdale will just win. It won't be the most exciting to watch. I don't think his, his price for the champion hurdle is going to be affected. I still no. think he's probably the most likely winner of the race. But sure, we'll know that he's alive anyway, and fit and well. Yeah. And the Ladbrokes Trophy would be a good race. Yeah. Early fancy from Gavin? I, I'd go with the last two winning trainers, either West Approach, maybe or Cabaret Queen, but I definitely want to see what Robbie Power is riding for the Tizards first. Okay. I'm going to put two at decent enough prices. Uh, one that's that's been back in the last couple of days, who I think will go well, is the Rasher Counter, who schooled really well at Newbury during the okay. week. And one at a huge price. I see Bryony Frost is booked. First run for Paul Nichols after leaving Venetia Williams. Yala Enki, I think, could potentially be well handicapped on his first run for Paul Nichols for me. Very good. Moving on to Sunday, and what a Sunday yeah. it's going to be a fairy house. Three grade ones, not just three grade ones, but we've got Envoy Allen. Mm -hmm. We have got in the Dream or Sam Crow against last year's Irish Grand National winner. Unbelievable, isn't it? Mm. Borough Saint yep. is still a novice until the 1st of December. After the 1st of December, so the very next day, he's not a novice anymore. So the, what a piece of place in by Willie Mullins. Burrow Saint goes against Sam Crow. It'll be interesting to see what way Bet365 priced that up. And then on to the Hatton's Grace. Oh me, oh my. We've got the three best mares we've seen for a long, long time in the shape of Apples Jade, who's trying to win the race for a fourth time. We've got Benny's to do. Of course, Gavin's heartache horse from the Cheltenham Festival. And you've got Honeysuckle, Gavin. <laughs> Another heartache. Um, yeah, the Hatton's Grace looks great. I probably side with Benny to do. I won't back Apples Jade. I know probably about it. I'm siding with Benny to do. She's uh, yeah. the best of them. Yeah, I think Picardi's run a big race. Um, I wouldn't... They're going to uh, price up Envoy Allen too short. They'll probably price him up at twos on and all that, but I won't back him with odds on. What's the dangers? Uh, Abracadabras, um, the fatty horse down the bottom would have a chance, but I'd say just uh, two miles. I just don't want to back a horse that wants further uh, at odds on, to be honest. Definitely wants further? I think so. Has the gears, obviously, it, it's won the bumpers, but I just wouldn't be backing it at twos on. Where are we with Sam Crow? Depends on what it doesn't it? Be careful. Um, you know you're talking to Sam Crow's biggest fan here. I don't think he'd beat Borough Saint. Really? Yeah, you do. Oh, look, I, obviously Borough Saint is phenomenal, but do you not think Sam Crow, if Sam Crow was an obvious chaser last season and he ran in the Irish Grand National off the mark that Borough Saint run off, that he would have won the Grand National as well? Possibly. Would he have stayed? But yeah. I know it's experience and I know he's a second season novice and I know... He's been there, he's done it, he's won a big handicap. And th this really sums us up, doesn't it? Because you like the proven <laughs> performer. The yeah. one that's gone and done it, whereas I'm a stick. Like, I, hope I, the love two them show up. I hope yeah. the two of them show up. I, I look at it, if Sam Crow wins, it'd be great as well. It'd be a great story to see him back. It would be fantastic. Yeah, it would. I think he will. But it's a great weekend's racing. And it's interesting, Don Cossack won the Drimmore as well. And I think there's a lot of similarities between Don Cossack and Sam Crow with their careers and the way that they've gone. So There'll be a massive crowd in Ferry House. There will be. And that crowd includes Gavin Lynch. So Gavin will be signing autographs yeah. in Ferry House. If you do see him, bring a pen, ask him for his autograph. Yeah. He's going to sign every one. Lovely. So before we come on to this week's anti-post picks for the 2020 Chetland Festival, it's time to have a look back at what we've picked so far. And Gavin, here are your four selections so far. Yeah, I was happy enough until Tuesday at half five. Yeah. Or, or Wednesday, rather. Gypsy Island, money down the drain, yes. unfortunately. Jan worked in the cross country, happy? Yeah, fine. Envoy Allen, big weekend for him. Yeah, I wouldn't look at if he if he wins by a length or whatever and, and is not impressive on Saturday or Sunday, rather, fairly out, I wouldn't I wouldn't worry. Okay. He never wins by too far, but No, no. But he's a class act. He is a class act. Overall, you're happy quite happy with these? Yes, okay, except for Gypsy Island, yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. So you're getting on. Those are Gavin's. Uh, mine obviously started particularly badly with Sharjah, who didn't exactly enhance his claims, but no. uh, I haven't given up. Uh, Min obviously is going to run in the John Durkin, uh, so we'll learn a lot more about Min. Uh, then City Island, I'm a little bit worried that we haven't seen him yet. Mm -hmm. I thought he'd be entered. Hopefully we will see City Island soon because I think he's a very good horse. It's time to get out and run. And yeah, it certainly is. And obviously Champagne Classic, it's fine. Doesn't run the Labrooks Trophy at the weekend, but I'm kind of happy with that because yeah. if he goes and wins the Labrooks Trophy, he might potentially end up in an RSA. Yeah. I think 10 to 1 for the four miler is cracking value. So we're, we're okay. Grant. We're okay. Yeah, still a long way to go. It's only week four. Yes, folks, it's time for the next installment of mine and Gavin's anti-post picks for the 2020 Cheltenham Festival. We're on to week four. Getting serious now, Gavin. Yes. We're taking it in turn, so I'm going to go okay. first this week, okay? We're going go. to leave viewers hanging on the edge of their seats for yeah. Gavin's selection, which is a massive price. Gavin is going for his biggest price selection, and it's one of his strongest fancies. You're going to hear about that in a few moments. But before then, it's time for mine. And I am going for Time Hill. In the Ballymore Novices Hurdle, a standout 14 to 1 with Bet365, and I think that's cracking value. This horse got within two and a half lengths of Envoy LN in the Champion Bumper at Cheltenham in March, staying on up the hill. I knew he'd improve for the step up and trip, but I didn't think he would improve as much as he has. He was really, really good in the grade two at Chepstow, beating Fiddler on the roof, he was. and then really, really professional last time in another grade two at Cheltenham. Just love the way he gets down and dirty. He He's not flashy. He's, no. he's not my type he's of horse, horse, to be honest with you. <laughs> he just gets the job done. And I think if he goes and wins the Chalo, which I think he will, and if Envoy LN wins on Sunday, they're going to be very tempted to go for the Supreme with Malone Road out. It could open up the Ballymore. And I think if it does, I cannot see a, a Time Hill finishing out with the first three if everything goes right. I think 14 to 1 is too big, even given what he's done so far. Listen to Philip Hobbs talking about him. He's in love with this horse. And you know what, Philip? I am too. It's Time Hill, a 14 to 1 for the Ballymore Novices Hurdle. So now, Gavin, it's over to you. And I don't think I've ever been so excited about a Gavin Lynch tip because Gavin told me what it was before the show. I was shocked. This is not a Gavin Lynch type selection at all. And it's a massive price. And he's so excited. So, Gavin. Tell viewers what it is and just explain why you're so excited. Uh, the name of the horse is Unaccepted. Uh, just be careful, there's a couple of spellings knocking about, but it's uh, Unaccepted. There will be up in the anti viewers watching this and they'll be saying, I have never heard of that horse, Unaccepted. Yeah, it, so uh, you explain why 20 well, to 1 with Bet365 for the Supreme Novice Hurdle, why up in the anti viewers should be back on that horse now. Do you remember the first time you met Aoife? I do, oh, I remember it well. So you fell in love. Well, I fell in love Instantly. last Tuesday with Unaccepted in Fairy House. It was only made in hurdle at the time, wasn't overly impressive. It was a bit quicker in the straight than the other uh, hurdle ran, uh, but just, he looked an amazing horse. Uh, he's 20 to one for the Supreme. I just think he's got a great chance if he goes that way. Um, he's a half brother to Greatfield. Greatfield was a sharp two miler. He was very keen. Um, this lad's not keen. He's a gorgeous big horse. He jumps brilliant. I just loved him. I just was blown away. It's a long time since I've seen, as I said to you, it's only a made in hurdle, but it's a long time since I've seen a horse with the gears that I saw on Tuesday. It's a long time since I heard Gavin Lynch tip a horse for a grade one after winning a maiden hurdle. Yeah. He's obviously made a huge impression on you. Huge impression. I just, I loved him. The second horse, Jason the Militant, was, had been third previously at Envoy Allen and a bumper. Uh, the third horse was the very man um, who was upside's Beacon, Beacon Edge, Edge uh -huh. when he fell at the last. Beacon Edge had some great runs last year beside Abacadabras and Embittered and so on. And had been third ten by Allen, so I think the farm's not too bad. It's a bit of a stab in the dark, but I mean, you're, if you want to back a horse at twenty to one, you have to take a few chances. So. Well, you say it's a stab in the dark. I've seen the light after listening to you there. I think he's he could be a class act. Hopefully, he is. You think he's the real deal? I think he is. Yeah. Visually, that's unaccepted. Twenty to one, a standout twenty to one with Bet three six five for the Supreme Novice Hurdle. Imagine kicking off your Cheltenham Festival with a twenty to one winner in the Supreme. Gavin thinks you should be backing unaccepted. So there you go, Time Hill and unac unaccepted our latest two fancies for the Cheltenham Festival. And unfortunately, folks, that's it for this week's show. That's been episode four of Up in the Ante in association with Bet365. I've been David Jennings. He's been Gavin Lynch. Enjoy all the fantastic racing this weekend, and we'll be back with you next Tuesday.